So in research, specifically in social science research is what I'm going to be talking about today, we often want to understand a large group, right? We may want to understand what's happening with newlyweds in the state of Utah, or parents in the United States, or families headed by a single parent across the world. These big groups are important to understand, but they're so big that it would be impossible for us to get data from every single person in that population. So we use techniques called sampling to pull out smaller groups that we can study and get data on and then make estimates for the larger population. To do this, however, we have to use the correct type of sampling to be able to make our estimates work. So one type of sampling that we're gonna talk about today is probability sampling. So this is in contrast to techniques called non-probability sampling. And the difference here is that in a probability sampling technique, you can calculate the probability that any one individual is being selected for the sample. Now, if you've taken a stats class, you've probably seen the example of balls being drawn from an urn. In that example, we have an urn that you cannot see inside of, and you're drawing balls out, and each time you take it out and you record it, you put the ball back in so that the probability always stays the same, that any single ball is selected for the sample. Now, when we're thinking about humans, let's take the example of students at UVU. If I am just pulling people that I see, that is not going to work for probability sampling. I don't know what the probability is that any single individual is going to walk past me in the hallway in the Clark Building. And in fact, if I did a study and I said, I want to study all students at UVU, I want my results to generalize to all students at UVU, but then I just sat on the first floor of the Clark Building and pulled students there, I would probably get very different students than I might if I did this on the second floor of the Computer Science Building. Just because students are taking different classes on different parts of campus at different times of day, and there's no way for me to really calculate the probability that any one student is gonna be walking past me. Instead, if I wanted to do a probability sample, and specifically let's describe a random sample, then I would need a list of students at UVU, and I could work with the registrar for this, right? And I could take 5% of the names on this list, randomly pulled off of the list, invite those individuals into my study, and this would be a truly random sample of the students at UVU, a probability sample. Each person has the same probability of being selected as any other person on this list. This random sample means that my little group of 5% of students should have very similar characteristics to the overall group and I can make estimates from my small sample using statistics that would generalize to the larger population. So let's take a sample of viewers of this video. Not truly random, but I wanna hear what kind of videos you'd like to see next. So leave a comment down below telling us what else you'd like to learn about, statistics and sampling or otherwise.